A large occlusion wraps up in Quebec, sending polar air into the Great Lakes and Northeast. In the Caribbean, Tropical Storm Melissa is coming together. And if you take a look across the southern U.S. and Mexico, faint evidence of an anticyclonic arc of Cirrus. That is the subtropical jet. A common question that I get is how do you distinguish between the subtropical and polar front jet? Well, we go up to 200 millibars near the top of the troposphere. That's going to be about 39,000 feet. See this little jet max right here, 100 knots across Baja, California, and that extends eastward into the Big Bend, San Antonio, and just south of Houston. Now, this is somewhat bound up with the polar front jet. I'll tell you right now, it's up here. So we're going to take a close look at those two areas. Let's go down a little bit lower. We go to 300 millibars, about 30,000 feet. 80 knots through Baja, California. We look across the Big Bend. It's a lot weaker, 55 knots, and we pick up the polar front jet further to the north. Then at 500 millibars, about 18,000 feet, there is the axis from about Tucson, Nogales, through New Mexico up to Amarillo. 50 knots through here. What happened in Baja, California, only about 30 to 40 knots and very little across Texas. Looks like about 15 to 30 knots. So that very powerful jet we had at 200 millibars, it's not there. So that's uh, good evidence of a subtropical jet. Meanwhile, it does retain its momentum through the southwest. That's the polar front jet. And the main corridor of the polar front jet is well up to the north. So this is a split flow pattern. And we take a look at that surface map across the country. We've got cold northwesterly flow across the northeast states, cold advection, air mass modification across the warmer terrain, and that gives us rain showers all through the Great Lakes into New York and snow showers further north. Across the southeastern states, a dry air mass dew points in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. But a reinforcement of cold air coming down through Kentucky and Tennessee with high pressure back behind it. A Pacific front is moving through New Mexico, cooler temperatures to the west, and the return of tropical moisture into the panhandles and west Texas. Dew points coming up near 60 at Abilene and 53 at Amarillo. And quiet on the west coast, but the weather will be going downhill this weekend. We'll take a closer look at that a little bit later. Tropical Storm Melissa continues to organize about 200 miles southeast of Jamaica. At 5 p.m., winds were steady at 45 miles an hour, 10.01 millibar pressure with a very slow northwest drift. The satellite imagery over the past two or three days does show multiple rounds of convective bursts. Another one is expected later tonight, but for the time being, the storm remains a little bit disorganized. This is expected officially to become a low-end Category 4 storm by Monday morning, and it's likely to affect Jamaica. This is the official track that I've got flashing here, and some of the model and consensus solutions. Here we have the HCCA consensus, which is the primary tool that NHC is watching at the present time. Here we have the Hurricane Analysis and Forecasting System. That's Configuration A, and this is Configuration B. The deterministic GFS model has gone a little bit erratic over the past few days, taking a very northeasterly track with aggressive recurvature. The ECMWF is one of the more accurate deterministic models, and it's going rather far to the west, being one of the westerly outliers. There's the UK MET model, the Canadian model, and the track variable consensus models. Kind of hard to see it, but it's going to be that cluster right there. That's kind of a super ensemble of all the different high skill models. So that is one possible track. But of course, we have a range of solutions that could go south of the island 
We could see a direct hit or it could wander further to the east. So a very complex setup and there's a range of possibilities where this storm is going to go. And that's really about all we can do. In the northeastern states, a cold advection pattern. We've got flow across the Great Lakes, picking up some showers on the lee side of the lakes. And with that, we've got highs in the low 50s and 60s along the east coast. Definitely a cold day in the western Great Lakes. We have saw highs of only about 40 at Marquette and 40s all through the Michigan UP and into northern Minnesota. Highs were 53 at Chicago, 58 at Cincinnati, and we've got freeze warnings and frost advisories across a huge swath of the Midwest and Mid-Atlantic states from southern Wisconsin and eastern Iowa across the Ohio River Valley into Kentucky, Virginia, and even into North Carolina. Temperatures will be in the upper 20s to the lower 30s tonight. In the southeastern states, high pressure and light and variable flow. The exception is that reinforcing shot of cold air coming through Tennessee this afternoon. Highs today were in the 70s as far south as Jacksonville, Atlanta, and Memphis, 80s into Florida, the hot spot Tampa with 88. As mentioned, frost and freeze warnings through North Carolina, the freeze warnings extend through the Blue Ridge Mountains and into the Asheville area. The fall season heat continues in the southern plains. We saw 90s across all of South Texas, 80s all the way up to Oklahoma City, and convective weather is back on the menu today. We look at the day one convective outlook and we see a slight risk extending from Hobbs and Lubbock into the Lawton, Oklahoma area, mostly due to large hail. We could see an isolated tornado today. Storms already ongoing across western West Texas not far west Texas, but around Clovis down into the southeast corner of New Mexico. At the present time, looks like a lot of elevated activity. Further to the north, one severe storm. Looks like just northwest of Tucumcari. Severe thunderstorm warning for possible gusts and quarter-sized hail. And slightly stronger convection going up between the Cap Rock and Fort Worth. Doesn't look like they're focusing on any particular boundary. I do see a couple of outflow pools right through here. And this storm near Frederick does have a severe thunderstorm warning for hail and high winds. The rapid refresh forecast system has been developing storms on the nose of the moisture this evening and into the overnight hours. It's got this one complex just north of Abilene, moving into the Mineral Wells area about 4 in the morning and into the DFW area around dawn. Then we get redevelopment for tomorrow, and you can see it's just going to be a mess. Some stronger storms south of Interstate 20 and down into the Del Rio area. All of that will organize and move eastward overnight into East Texas and the Gulf Coast region, and then possibly another round of storms for Saturday a little bit further south between Interstate 20 and Interstate 10. In the northern plains, fair skies in many places. However, it is going to be a cold one tonight. We're looking for overnight lows of 25 at International Falls, 20s across northern Minnesota into much of central Wisconsin, and as cold as 29 at Madison. Definitely a hub of meteorology there with the University of Wisconsin, they've got a satellite operations center and a full-fledged meteorology program. So I guess if you're in that part of the country, that's a good place to attend. In the southwestern states, we've got that frontal system making its way through New Mexico. Occlusion wrapping back into the Four Corners area. Let me give you the setup. Front is going to be like that the cold front, then the warm front, kind of indeterminate somewhere in northern New Mexico, and then the occlusion wrapping back into that cold core low. In between the triple point and the cold core low, extensive showers and storms on the higher terrain. Earlier today, we had flash flood warnings in parts of the canyons of southern Utah. Those storms were producing up to about an inch of rain. Further west, we saw pleasant conditions in the deserts, mid-80s from Phoenix to Yuma, 
70s through California, 76 at Los Angeles, 71 for San Diego and San Francisco, up to 68 today. The Pacific Northwest. Oh, yeah, big frontal system on its way in. Things are about to get stormy. Right now, the highs are mostly in the 60s across the Pacific Northwest, a few 70s down in, around Medford and Bend. We are going to see increasing chances of rain tonight starting in Seattle and Portland and expanding inland for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, multi-day event. A high wind warning is in effect for coastal southwestern Oregon. Saturday, southwest winds could gust to 60 miles an hour. The coastal areas will be hazardous due to 20 to 28 foot breaking waves and sneaker waves. Beach hazards will continue through Sunday. You may think nobody's on the beach, but razor clam season starts in the fall, continues through the winter, so there could be some people out there. And taking it west and north, there's that frontal system lined up, the occlusion extending further north into the Alaska Panhandle, and a vast area of cold air advection in the wake of that cold front. Heading up into Alaska itself, a weak front from about Fort Yukon down through Cook Inlet to the west, blustery north winds, temperatures in the 20s. In Canada, most of the problems are in British Columbia with this occlusion moving inland. We have wind warnings all along the coast, southeast winds gusting to 55 miles an hour today as far south as Vancouver, and that will extend deep into the interior. You can see 25 knots right there at Prince George. And I think, yeah, that's 25 knots further south. It's probably Williams Lake. Looking pretty pleasant through the prairies, high pressure in Manitoba, and then heading into Quebec, wrapped up occlusion. Along this cold front moving through Newfoundland, we do have rainfall warnings for the southern Avalon Peninsula through Saturday, right in here, due to expected two to three inch rainfall amounts, especially Friday. They may get some thunderstorm activity. Looks like a wave right down that front, which will probably track northeastward. One problem spot in the Arctic, western Victoria Island right there. There's a town called Ulukaktuk. A winter storm warning is in effect there through this evening due to blowing snow and east winds over 60 miles an hour. And certainly looks like a pretty wrapped up weather system with strong pressure gradients. Sox Harbor, they've got 35 knot sustained winds and temperatures of 28 with snow and blowing snow. And uh, yeah, it looks a bit stormy in that part of the Arctic. The rest of the Arctic looking pretty typical for this time of year. Looks like 20s and up at Eureka down to minus 4. Here was the expected highs today. It'll be much the same through Friday. The cold air moving through the Great Lakes into the northeastern U.S. And it will remain cold up there through the weekend. As we go into Sunday, much colder air coming through the Pacific Northwest. 40s in the mountains and 50s through the Great Basin. The northern high plains remains warm down in Texas. There's Tuesday and Wednesday, a little bit cooler air flowing down south through Oklahoma, Arkansas, and the central Mississippi River Valley. Overnight lows for tonight, quite cold up in Minnesota. You can see that corridor of cold air coming down. Very warm on the nose of that low-level jet there in Texas. Then for tomorrow night, remaining warm in Texas, and then a bit of a cool down for Sunday. You can see that colder air coming down for Sunday night. And especially Monday night, some teens in the higher mountain towns like Jackson. And 14 at Yellowstone, 19 at Butte, Montana. There's Wednesday. And we take a look at the precipitation. You're going to see that rain coming in on the Pacific coast. Spreading eastward across much of the Pacific Northwest. There's those rains in Texas for Saturday North Texas, East Texas, Oklahoma, very rainy, and that gradually filters off to the east. And there's your Monday forecast, and we take it into Tuesday and Wednesday. And let's go ahead and take a look at that forecast. I don't want to get too far behind schedule. Friday, tomorrow morning, low-level jet set up, and then we get the storms going up. Somewhere between the big country, the Edwards Plateau, the Big Bend, head of that cold front, along the axis of that return moisture. There is an SPC slight risk across much of that area 
up to Vernon, Mineral Wells, down to Austin, San Antonio, and over to the Big Bend. Few tornadoes are possible on the Edwards Plateau right in here and in the hill country and even into the Abilene area. They could see a risk of that. Hail and damaging winds will be the main problems. And as we go into the Friday night and Saturday period, very heavy rains. A lot of high precipitation efficiency with high precipitable waters. So we're going to see those precip totals up into the three and four inch amounts in a lot of areas. We'll gradually see a drying trend Saturday night and Sunday working into the lower elevations. And here comes that Pacific front into the plains for Sunday and Monday. Not much southward extent. However, by Tuesday and Wednesday, it will slam into the Midwest, the central Mississippi River Valley. And finally, we'll get some cold air filtering south for Wednesday and Thursday. Here's the Hovemuller diagram for the next couple of weeks. North America located right in here. So you can see we're going to be dominated by this ridging through the weekend. And then as we get into Halloween and the uh, start of November, a series of troughs moving through the central and eastern U.S. That combined with the ridging on the west coast, that spells, well, that's associated with a PNA type pattern. I'm not saying that's what this is, but if you're familiar with PNA, positive PNA type weather, you tend to get strong northwesterly flow. Outbreaks of cold air, that's definitely favored, and you can see that's a distinct possibility all the way through the 7th of November. So these charts don't really capture that, but uh, basically we're going to see more of this going on into the first week of November. And there comes the next one, kind of a weak Alberta Clipper, and there'll probably be some stronger ones as indicated by that Hovmuller diagram. It's very rare that you get that kind of west U.S. ridge and strong east coast troughing without displacing some polar air southward. But that's quite a ways away. We're just going to have to revisit that next week because things could always change. But I think the uh, large scale details do point to a cooling trend for the central and eastern U.S. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank our Patreon supporters who came through over the weekend. That was great to see. Definitely a morale boost. If you can't help us on Patreon, you can click that subscribe button or like or comment. Even just commenting helps with engagement. So I hope you'll do one of those three things. And of course, you can consider the weathergraphics.com site and pick up a copy of a book. And we'll be back again after the weekend. We have the Monday show for the supporters and Tuesday for everybody else. Hopefully we'll see you then and very likely we're going to have some interesting weather to look at. So we shall look forward to that. All right. Take care and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.